Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA Plus certification training course. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk about laptop and portable technologies. This is an overview presentation that talks about the requirements from CompTIA's exam 220-601, our essentials exam, section 2.1, where we need to identify the fundamental principles of using laptops and portable devices. In 220-602, the technician exam, also section 2.1, uh, it's also similarly called the identify fundamental principles of using laptops and portable devices. The difference between the 601 and 602 exam is the 602 exam tends to go in a little bit bit more detail. So we'll talk about more detail information in this presentation. And you can see we're going to talk about a lot. We're going to talk about form factors and peripherals, expansion slots, communication, mobile versus desktop operation, input devices, power and electrical input devices, and LCD technologies. So there's a lot in a portable environment that is very different than the desktop environment. But one of the things you'll find is there's also a lot of similarities. Let's talk uh, first about form factors. We talk about those similarities. Here is the difference when we're looking at memory. The top uh, memory module here is a dual inline memory module that you would see very normally in a desktop system. A laptop or portable system might have in it something called a SODEM, a small outline dual inline memory module. And you can see one of the, the big differences about this is that it's smaller. And in this particular case, this, this SODEM on the screen actually has more capacity in it than this larger DIM that I have up here at the top. The SODEMs are smaller in size, but they pack on just the same amount of storage that you would get in a desktop computer. The difference, however, when you're getting into that smaller environment, that the price of those components is a little bit more. But these days, with memory costs being so low, the differences aren't that dramatic. But it's nice to have this smaller size because it is fitting into a mobile environment. You have a similar situation with hard drives. Hard drives in a desktop environment might be this larger 3 and a half inch drive. When you work in laptop type environments or portable environments, you have much smaller drives. This is a 2 and a half inch laptop drive. And in fact, in the smaller media devices, you even have smaller drives inside of those. We're getting down into 1 and a half and 1 inch drives in those. The smaller the drives get, the larger amount of storage, and certainly the more that we'll be able to do with these mobile devices. The peripherals that you would have in a in a mobile type device, specifically a laptop, are things like this. You would never have this on a, a desktop system because this is a docking station. This is something that's always sitting on your desk. Whenever you bring your computer in, your computer is designed to dock with this system. On the back of this device, you'll have a lot of different ports. So this is where you'd always have your monitor plugged in. This is where your Ethernet connection would always be connected. This is where your printers might connect, your mouse, your external mouse and keyboard, so that you can plug your laptop in but use it as if it was a desktop. And there's a switch on the side. You push the button, and your laptop pops off of that. And now it's mobile again. You can go do other things. This is a very easy way to dock your system and use it in your office, but still be able to disconnect it quickly and use it as a mobile device when you're away from your desk. Another thing that you will see on portable devices and laptop devices are these customized or specialized expansion slots. Unlike desktop systems that we could pull the top off of it and we could stick in adapter cards in our PCI slots, well, we don't have that capability in laptops. They're very self-contained. We can't really pull the top off of those and put full-size expansion cards in. So there's a specialized type of expansion slot designed for laptop and portable devices. Early on, this first type was something called a PCMCIA slot or a Personal Computer Memory Card International Association. And there were different kinds. There was a PCMCIA type 1, 2, and 3. Fortunately, they've changed that name from PCMCIA to PC card. But you'll still hear old timers like me, we're still calling it PCMCIA slots. You don't see these slots on the newer computers, however. The newer computers use something called card bus. Before we talk about card bus, let me talk about those different types of of, of type 1, type 2, and type 3 expansion slots and card bus slots because they look very similar. In fact, all three of those cards 
are are different. Let's flip back to that real quick. These cards, this is a PCMCIA Type 2 card. This is a PCMCIA Type 3 card, but this is a card bus card. But they look very similar. They almost look like they could slide right into the same slot. But if you turn them on them side, their side and look at it, you'll notice that there's these little connectors, these, these slots on there carved out of the, of the card itself. So you could slide the card in, but unless it matches this key that's in the plastic of the card itself, it's not going to slide in there. So you can't accidentally plug in a PCMCIA card into a card bus slot. It doesn't work that way. Notice that you can plug in these PCMCIA cards into card bus, but not vice versa. So the systems you have, you can't go wrong. If it, you plug it in, it's not going. It's not fitting. It doesn't fit into that slot. Then you've got a mismatch there. and You're going to need to find a different type of card. Check your manufacturer for the laptop for the type of card that you need to go into that expansion slot. And here's a closer shot of that. You can really see these are carved right out of there. So unless you're using the right type of card, it's just not going to fit in there. The newest type of connection on laptops is something called Express Card. This is the newest flavor of those expansions. And almost all of the new laptops these days are using the Express Card format. There's two types of Express Cards. There's an Express Card 34 and an Express Card 54. And this refers to the width of the Express Card itself. Not the bus width, but the actual 54 millimeters, 34 millimeters across. Smaller devices will use these smaller cards. Larger devices will use maybe a larger Express Card just because there's more that you can do with that real estate. The Express Cards themselves and those computer connections can be used for different things. A lot of people will plug in and connect via Bluetooth, for instance. These are used very often for voice and for file transfers, but Bluetooth can be used for a lot more. It's just that the technologies that we've created for Bluetooth aren't doing much more than providing voice and file transfers these days. You'll also see on laptops and portable devices infrared slots. These are usually used to print with. Many printers will have an infrared connection on there. Although there are some, uh, some pieces of software that will allow two computers to talk to each other over this infrared connection. Windows certainly provides that capability. So you may find the ability to do file transfers without any type of cable on there is something that you can take advantage of if there's an infrared port. The newer laptops, even some older laptops, can take advantage of mobile WAN connections. This is usually over a mobile technology. Some people refer to the older style of the word cellular. It's not really cellular, but we talk about the cell phone networks in that very global or very generic way. This is a way that you can network and be on the internet from anywhere. As long as there is a cell phone tower somewhere nearby, you can get on that mobile connection and connect to the internet these days over increasingly fast speeds. So this is very useful to have, especially if you're someone who travels a lot, you're in the field, there's not a wireless connection anywhere, an 802.11 wireless, there's nowhere to plug in with your ethernet, you just connect to your mobile provider's cellular connection. And finally, on most laptop devices and some portable devices, you'll see these Ethernet connections, it's just a built-in port that's on the back of your system where it's plugged in. So you can just take an Ethernet connection, maybe in a hotel or somewhere else that you're staying, plug it directly into your mobile device, and now you're connected to the network. There are some differences in the operation between a mobile device and a desktop device. So I wanted to take you through some things you need to be aware of, especially on the exam. One is something called throttling. Whenever you work on a laptop environment, these laptops and the chips inside of them get very hot very fast. And because it's such a very small environment, it's very closed in and generally doesn't have a lot of airflow through it, what you'll find is the CPUs will drop down to a slower speed when they get hotter. This is something called throttling. So the hotter they get, the slower they go. But if they didn't slow down, they would get increasingly hot and potentially cause damage to the components inside of your system. You'll also see throttling take place if you're not powered, in, powered uh, into the computer. You don't have a physical power connection. Many laptops will automatically go to a lower CPU cycle so that it doesn't use so much of your battery. So if you're not plugged in and you're noticing that your computer is getting slower and slower, what you may find is that the heat inside of it or the fact that you're not powered into the computer is what's really causing your slowdown. 
power management inside of a mobile and portable device extremely important. There's a number of standards that have come out that uh, address power management so that you can extend the battery life inside of your laptop. Some simple things like turning off the hard drive from spinning when you're not using it, having your display run at a, at a lower amount of light so that it's not using up this power. These very small things make a very large impact when you're running from a battery. And so having this power management capability inside of these portable devices can really extend the battery life and the amount of time that you get when you're using this device with the battery. Also inside of mobile devices, something you don't often see inside desktop devices is built-in Wi-Fi, built-in wireless 802.11 networking. That's because these devices are moving. You're moving through a city. You're going from place to place. You're going from hotel to hotel. You're just going between your work and to home. Often our homes these days, we already have a Wi-Fi connection. So having that network connection in a laptop allows you to take advantage of the Wi-Fi that you might have wherever you might go. The input devices on a laptop and a portable device are often different than a desktop computer. This is a good example of a, a laptop that has the mouse pad at the bottom, also has this track stick that you can put your mouse on and your finger on and move the mouse around the screen with uh, other types of buttons available to you when you're using that. So it depends on the portable device you have, but you can see that the keyboard is smaller, the mouse connection is very different than on a desktop computer, and it just has to be because of the environment that we're in. Here's a close up of both of those. This is the pad. You just simply put your finger on the pad, move it around, and it moves your mouse around the screen. Then this little ball is a, a stick, and as you move the stick, your mouse moves around the screen. On this particular laptop, you've got the choice of either of those to use at a time. Some laptops may only have one of those available, or it may use a different type of input device. But just keep in mind the desktops and the laptops and portable devices are just using different ways to input, but ultimately it's performing the same function as any mouse or any keyboard might. Battery technology is constantly changing, and it's probably because we need more and more power inside of our portable devices. A very early type of battery is something called a NICAD or a nickel cadmium. We sometimes will generically refer to our batteries as a NICAD battery. But NICAD is referring to this type of chemical makeup inside of the battery. And these batteries were great because they were really able to handle what we call deep discharges. That's where you take the battery and you run it all the way out, all the way down to nothing, and they'll charge right back up again, very resilient in their operation. But the newer types of batteries that we've needed to come out are things like nickel metal hydride, or NIMH. You'll see that written on the side of the battery. These uh, are, it's very easy to be over discharged, which means not only does this battery run all the way out, but if there are other batteries in line with it, you can actually negatively charge the battery. It can super discharge, if you will, the battery. And then it's not able to charge back up again or not able to charge all the way back up again. So you can't damage the battery with those. So we don't see very many of those around in the industry anymore because they've been replaced by lithium ion batteries. Although the service type of these batteries is, well, it's relatively limited. They'll, they'll only have a certain number of charges and discharges that they will do. The, the batteries themselves can be completely discharged and charged right back up again. So they're very resilient. As time goes on, though, what you'll find is they aren't holding as much charge as they used to. And that's because of the technology in this lithium ion. Ultimately, every lithium ion you have will completely decrease over time. As soon as that battery is made, even if you aren't using it, it's only going to be a matter of time until it just won't charge up anymore. And you have to replace that and get a new battery. Here's a close up of a lithium ion battery. These are two different models. And you can see the batteries, depending on the, the laptop that you happen to have, might have different connections on it. It might be styled a little bit differently. And it might have different capacities 56 watt hours versus 80 watt hours. The higher watt hours, generally, the more use you're able to get out of those batteries. So you want to check the ratings on them and make sure that you're getting the battery for the type you'll need. Larger batteries often will have a larger capacity, smaller batteries with a smaller capacity, depends on your portable device and how bulky you want the battery to be, maybe on the back of it or on the bottom of it. With portable devices, you also have these external power supplies. If you recall from our 
talks in an earlier module, we looked at the power supply that's usually inside the case of a desktop. You don't really have that type of functionality with portable devices. You have these AC adapters that are external to the devices. Generally, these are auto switching. They don't usually have a fixed input. That means that you're able to use them in different voltages, which means you're able to use the exact same piece of power supply whether you're in a uh, the United States or whether you're in Europe. So you've got some options there. The voltages, if it's an input voltage, it's usually running at 110 volts here in the United States or 220 volts if you go to other countries overseas. You'll, if you look at the power supply itself, it'll say right on here that this input on this model will support 100 volts or 240 volts. And you can see that the little AC symbol there, this is AC type current. And it will run at either 50 hertz or 60 hertz, depending on the voltages you happen to go. 50 hertz on the 100 volt, 240 volt uses 60 hertz at 2 amps. It also says that it will output 19.5 volts via DC, that's our DC symbol, and 4.62 amps within there. And it also gives the symbol that shows you that the inside of this AC adapter has the positive and the outside is the negative. So you've got everything you need there to sync up with the device that it happens to be plugging into. So if you go to another country that has a different power, you can simply look at the AC power adapter that you brought. And you'll know that all you have to do is plug it in with maybe an adapter to change the prongs. But you shouldn't have to do anything else to have this power adapter work just fine. When you start working with mobile devices, they almost exclusively have an LCD display with them. You don't want to lug around a big cathode ray tube with you on your portable device. And these displays are something called either an active matrix display or a passive matrix display. These days, we see mostly active matrix, although there are a number of older laptops that use this slower type of display called a passive matrix. They were less expensive displays, however, so it made sense to have those in there. But you'll find that when you move the mouse across the screen or something happens quickly on the screen, it takes a little bit longer for it to refresh in front of you. These devices also have native resolutions associated with them. So I've put down here a number of the very common resolutions that you might see on your CompTIA A plus exam, XGA, SXGA plus, UXGA, and WUXGA. And you can see the resolutions are right next to there. And they stand for things like Extended Graphics Array, or Ultra Extended Graphics Array, or one that's becoming very prevalent, the widescreen formats, like the widescreen Ultra Extended Graphics Array. So although it's a lot that's here with the resolutions and the types, it's useful to know these because you'll often see them referred to not only on the exam, but when you're picking out a new laptop and you're looking at the screens on an LCD monitor, you'll see that these types of resolutions are referenced. And if you have a laptop, you want to be sure that you're matching your laptop or portable device resolution to the resolution of the LCD display that you might be getting to use external to that device. In review, we've looked at a lot of different pieces that deal with portable and laptop devices, everything from our form factors to our peripherals, our expansion slots, and communication connections. But we've also looked at comparisons of the two, like looking at uh, the input devices, the power differences, and finally, what we can expect to see in the display technologies with these portable and laptop devices. For more free videos, to participate in our message boards, and much more, you can visit our website, freeaplus.com.